What's up, guys? Lovely day, isn't it? Sort of. So, people are lost, guys. I've been going to the gym. My dad was uh, into the gym because uh, maybe unusual for an INFJ, but <clears throat> he had uh, rheumatoid arthritis from the time he was seven, and so that was sort of his way of building back some of the lost size he had. He, his upper body stopped growing when he was like 12, so. So we, my brother and I started going with it, mainly me. My brother wasn't really into it. So that's kind of what started me working out. And it just kind of picked, it, it stayed with me because like my mental health is so much better when I work out. Like afterwards, I feel great. It's really the only time of day I feel good is after working out. But anyway, I hate, I hate how this doesn't, I don't feel like it's in the right position, like ever. But anyway, guys, people are lost. I, that's the point I was trying to make just now. I've been going to the gym since I was like 13, back in like the year 2000, 1999, 2000, something like that. And things have changed so much. Young kids you see in the gym nowadays, first of all, you actually see a lot more young kids in the gym. It used to be, I was the only young one. Um, nowadays, you see a lot more teens, um, man, early, early 20s. It was mostly like late 20s, early 30s back when I was younger. But you notice a lot more attitude nowadays, a lot more like moping around and depression. A lot of guys kind of have their heads down and are, you know, kind of almost like they're afraid to make eye contact. They mope around almost like their shoulders are slumped, like they're depressed and they're just miserable. I think there's various reasons for this, but the, the main reason that that a lot of people neglect to consider is because we kicked God out of the country and now nobody knows what to do anymore. Everyone's lost, guys. All these young kids doing all these stupid things. They think that sex is everything. They think, you know, these women that think that the best way to make a living is OnlyFans and basically ruin, ruin your entire life, ruin your entire future. Doing OnlyFans basically ruins your entire future. You know, it's the old... It, it, the, no matter what age you live in as a human, there's always that option to sell your soul. Nothing in life is free, guys. Anything that sounds really good, sounds too good to be true, has some sort of downside. you got to pay the price somewhere. Millions of dollars, billion, billionaire, you have no privacy, everyone wants to kill you, everyone wants your money, everyone hates you. Now, do you want that? I wouldn't want that. I, I would not take a billion dollars to have that life. I would not in a million years. Dude, I only have like 2,400 subscribers. And even that's a little too much for me. But I'm an INTP too though. So uh, INTPs are famous for hating being famous when they become famous. I'm obviously not famous. But like at 2,400 subscribers and I'm already a little irritated with the, all the attention I get. I can't imagine how bad it would be if I had millions of fans, you know. Screw that. Einstein famously remarked about that, how he regretted becoming famous. He really didn't like the unwanted attention. INTPs like a life of peace so they can think, guys. It's hard to think when you have people bugging you all the time. Anyway, guys. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah, everyone's lost. Everyone's depressed. There's no meaning. There's no meaning anymore. People think the meaning in life is, you know material and that's what a lot of a lot of these people are teaching them people like Wes Watson and the people from Fresh and Fit guys like that without God what else is there but material which is crazy to me too because like it kind of reminds me of the whole the strong survive uh, you know might makes right mentality this whole Darwinian uh, uh, mindset it's just absolute BS it's, it's short sighted it's stupid you know, they say nice guys finish last. That assumes that winning has some sort of meaning. If you're if you sacrifice your integrity to win, if you if you stomp on other people to win, what meaning does that have? 
Dude, in a hundred years, you're not going to be here. Nobody's going to care about your legacy once the once the Earth is gone and, you know, the heat death or whatever the hell scientists say is going to be the end of the universe. None of that's going to matter. So what does it matter what you do on this Earth? People that want to accomplish all these great things, like, why? Like, why? I, I, I mean, I, I get... I understand the constant drive, but, like, in the end... In the end, everything's meaningless. It really means nothing. The only point of succeeding and, and doing great things is for your life while you're here. That's the purpose of, in my opinion anyway, is to have a better life while you're here. And a life for your children. You know, obviously. But, you know, it's meaningless. So the whole nice guys finish last thing is complete BS. I mean, it's only true materially. It's materially true. But in the end, what happens? What happens in the end? What happens in the end? When you come face to face with God and he asks you, like, why why did you stomp on all these people for personal gain? Why did you sacrifice your honor and integrity and, and truth and, and, all, and all of that for personal gain? What are you going to say? He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me. Ooh, that's scary. Guess what? Christianity is a fact. Christ's death and resurrection is a historical fact. It is the most verified historical fact there is. We have more evidence for Jesus' existence, death, and resurrection than we have for almost any event in history. We have more evidence than we have for Julius Caesar. A lot more. People say, oh, the sources weren't early enough. You know what the earliest source we have for Alexander the Great is like 800 years after? I mean, like, most historical figures are like that. We, we don't have the first manuscript for hundreds of years. And then people say, oh, but it's not, well, uh, the manuscript is not, uh, uh, you know, uh, based, it's not, it's not trying to prove something supernatural. You need, you need, uh, what, what do they say? Um, what's the saying they use? I can't remember it. I can't remember now what it's called. What, what do they say? <laughs> extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That's completely false. It's, it was debunked a long time ago philosophers debunk that. It's just not true. Extraordinary claims require evidence. Evidence is evidence. There's just this thing is, is you know, <laughs> you can't, you, I mean, like, evidence is evidence. Something either has evidence or it doesn't. Anyway. Christianity is a fact, guys. You know, I kind of irritate some other Christians that I've met. They say it, it has, to, your belief has to be based on faith. Okay, well, I kind of irritate other Christians in that way as an INTP. I'm a Christian because it's a fact. I'm a Christian because I just love being right. Simple as that. I mean, it is a fact. There's no other way around it. The only way to not be a Christian is to, to deny reality, to deny historical, archaeological, scientific reality. We know for a fact that God exists because you have, have your head in the sand. You have to really not want it to be true. Actually, I've found that's usually the case. They don't want it to be true. And it makes you wonder, like, what, what kind of things are they up to in their personal life to so desperately not want some sort of higher judge, right? That's usually the case. So we know God exists. So which which religion actually has historical evidence, like actual documented historical? The only one is Christianity. I heard someone say recently, oh, Islam, <laughs> Islam's the better. I mean, that's crazy to me when people say that. that. That right there shows they don't know their history at all. Islam is like the most debunkable religion there is. Because all ancient historians say that Jesus died on the cross. The ancient Jewish historians say he died on the cross. The ancient Greek historians say he died on the cross. The ancient Roman historians say he died on the cross. Ancient Indian, they all say the same thing. All the East Asian historians say he died on the cross. Then, 600 years after Jesus was existed, so long it says, oh no, he didn't die on the cross. He's the only person who says in the Quran he didn't die on the cross. It's supposedly, like, divinely inspired, right? There's tons of other reasons why it's not divinely inspired. It has all kinds of scientific falsehoods. Yeah, it is the most debunkable religion there is. 
It's just crazy. It has no, no historical evidence at all. And people say, oh, they're the same religion because, and the reason they think they're the same religion is because they share similar roots through Ishmael and Abraham. Obviously the same, the similar genetic roots. And because he used the Genesis story in the Quran, and that's the reason they say they're the same God. It's the stupidest thing ever because they're completely different gods, diametrically opposed. You know, the Christian God's all loving, loves all non-believers. Uh, uh, the Islamic God hates unbelievers, literally says to like kill them, cut off their fingertips, you know, uh, hates unbelievers. Anyway, Christian God loves every human being, wants to save us, wants to save you, even though you don't believe in, don't, don't like him, still wants to save you. How great, it, how great is that? What a nice guy, right? And here you are just flipping the bird to him. How do you think that makes him feel? How would it make you feel if you had a son? You you did literally did everything for them and said, hey, I'm always here. It, it, you just have to acknowledge my existence. That's all you have to do. And you can have a relationship with me. That's all you have to do is just, just believe that I exist. Acknowledge me in some way. And you're just like, you're basically like, F you. F you. I don't have any judge. Same. It's the same thing. Anyway, guys. Christianity is a fact. It's about time you believe it because it's a fact. I mean, you know, if Christianity is a fact, you have to believe it. And not believing it is just, you know, you're, you're just deciding to believe in falsehoods. You're deciding not to believe a fact. I don't understand why you would just not believe a fact. But anyway, appreciate you watching, guys. Start to acknowledge facts in your life. Have a good day.